So guys, the next part is down here. And I'm sitting at the floor because I have to lower the car. And in the rear here, I need something to hitch on a trailer or a spare tire or something like that. And I know that sports cars does not have this, but this is a car for driving and eating ice cream and stuff like that. So I don't care. I need to add this here. And there are a couple of things that you need to think about. First of all, the mount itself needs to be very, very sturdy and it needs to be properly um, set together in terms of push strengths and up and down strengths and everything and the hitch itself needs to be approved this one here is approved for three and a half tons I'm never going to draw that or use that perhaps 700 kilo at most so this one is more than enough and in my case they need to be bolted as well so I did choose this one next thing is the height between the floor and up, it needs to be between 35 and 45 centimeters, I think, roughly around there. And having it here is actually in the lowest setting. So this is basically just about to be approved if I'm lucky. So I need to put as high up as I just can do, and preferably it will most likely sit up here. But then the bolts will be in the way for this part here. So let's see how we can do it and let's start by cutting out the plate that this one will sit on. We have this plate here, it's 8 mm thick and it's good enough for this type. 2 in 16 bolts so will fit in through here and they are rather long. Lock washers as well, of course. And it even says here 350 to 420 mm is the height to the middle of it. I think we should be able to manage that. 90. And we're going to mount it in the top. Because then we have space to raise it up and down. Measure the hole. 17. And the distance there is 19. So 17 split by 2 is 8.5. Plus 19 is 27.5. Now we have 90 in the middle, so let's start with 13, split by 2. Rounding off all the edges, of course. And then it's time for actually see how it actually fits on the car and what I need to remove from the end sticking out in the rear there. I'm also testing so the bolts, if I can get them in backwards or not, but I can't. You can mount it roughly there, that should be fine. I cannot get those in from the back side, that's impossible. What we're going to do is make sure that we can cut this one.
chamfering the edges of course so the welding will penetrate properly Time for next challenge, and that's a fan to cool the coolers. To mount that one I decided to mount on the inside, there is just enough room to do this and it was planned for that. But first, let's remove the intercooler. trying to figure out how to mount it, but I decided to go with a rather simple strategy here. It's now time to mount the brackets to the cooler, so I weld them directly into place. The fan still fits, and that's a really good sign. So let's cut some bolts off that I'm going to use, because I didn't have short enough ones. And I'm using M6 uh, insects. Here I just add some foam in the bottom, just to make sure that it doesn't chafe against the cooler itself. It's now time for the actual fit to see that everything actually 
works out as I planned. First I get the cooler back in place. And as you can see it's a snug fit, but it works out. Between the cone itself in the, in the front and the cooler I need some kind of plate. And that's just basically to get the air to move through the cooler instead of uh, the side of it. So I cut this template out that I'm going to use to cut up some thin 1mm aluminium plate. Now it's time to actually mark out where the hole should be for the cooler itself. It's not the easiest I could tell, but uh, I managed to get it working after an hour or so fiddling around. So there you have the first marked up and I test fitted it some more. Add some more holes and here you have actually the final product in terms of aluminium. I have done it in three pieces because it was less waste so I have as you can see and uh, got it together in the ends itself. And before welding of course you need to clean it up again so I'm using some acetone to make sure that the surface is pretty clean at least. This one is a little bit tricky too, because I'm going to weld it into onto the cooler itself and that's really not the best solution. And the cooler itself is a really thick material and this one is really really thin, so it's it was a nightmare to do, but it holds up as of today. That's actually it for this video, so I'm actually thankful for watching and unfortunately no good ending, um, but there is more content coming in short. Um, so stay tuned for that and see you in the next one, bye.